What is going on guys, Frey here, finally back on the river after a very long break of several months trying to finish up grad school. And here I am back chasing the very first king salmon of the season, trying to cross paths with one of these early run fish. Always one of my favorite things to do, always brutal, lots of skunk trips. But there's a few fish poking around in here and I'll be chasing them with my two methods that I always use, floating with a bobber and skein and fishing with an arctic spinner. And as we start the season off, I want to remind you guys, as I've been trying to do for the last few years, Let's really prioritize respecting the river when we come out here and chase these fish during these runs. They draw really big crowds because it's such an amazing spectacle, these huge fish in these small streams. But we gotta take care of these streams and clean up trash. Uh, it's always a big litter issue. And also trying to encourage people to use fair chase methods like skein or bait or lures or different kinds of presentations to get these fish to actually bite as opposed to what's normally done. There's a lot of snagging that happens on these rivers, which is of course illegal and unacceptable and when people are snagging on fish, it puts them down so the rest of us can't get them to actually bite. So once those fish feel hooks in their back, it's over. And really trying to encourage fair chase, lots of force feeding fish as well. If you fish salmon on the Great Lakes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Flossing is probably the most popular method by far. And that's how I learned to fish. That's how a lot of us learn to fish. And that's kind of just the traditional way to chase salmon in these rivers. But just because that's the way it's always been done, I don't think that's the way it has to be done in the future. You know, seeing more people try out fair chase methods, it makes the fishing better for everyone because fish don't have hooks in their backs and double rigs all over them. So it's just something I'm trying to encourage and suggest you guys to try if you haven't tried it before. It's crazy how these things will crush an Arctic spinner or crush bait. I'm gonna share a few discount codes with you guys as well to hopefully help you guys out as you're getting geared up because now is the time to gear up. Got a code for the Arctic Spinner, which I'll put right here. Um, these things are already dirt cheap for a lure that's so high quality, but I'm in love with this lure. If you've watched my channel, you know it's my absolute favorite lure for salmon and they will chase it out of the hole and inhale it. So I strongly recommend that. And then everything I use for float fishing here, uh, hooks, leader, line, bobber, and the Skein Cane HD rod here, it's all from Blood Run Tackle. Um, so I really put a lot of trust in their gear and I have a discount code for them as well if you guys want to get a little deal and as you're getting stocked up for king season. So you want to get stocked up before the tackle shops are sold out. Hopefully I've got a video out for you guys already uh, going through the rigs to remind you guys uh, what I'm using and hopefully help you guys get set up. So with all that being said, the sun is officially up. Fish are rolling around a little bit in this hole. It's, it's not super encouraging, but the water's nice and cool, 62 degrees, totally worth a shot. So I'm going to bait this thing up. See if we can get a bobber down. Alrighty guys, got my bait here. Skein chunk secured with Boraxo Fire from Plotsky. Strongly recommend that you glove out first. This stuff is hard on your hands. It's a little bit annoying, but you won't regret it later. Got my usual setup, which is includes a stinger hook. So make sure you know your local regulations. And something that I realized is you guys, yeah, if you're gonna use a stinger hook, you gotta have bait on there as well. Or technically they can get you for no bait on hook. You can see this knot slides. So I push this knot back, just a normal snell knot. And then I've got a loop there for my bait. I'm gonna set this right in. Cinch it tight, try not to poke a hole in your gloves. Make sure you got that stinger hook in the bait. Looks good, guys. Alright guys, first king hookup of the season, always a huge adrenaline rush. Lost him immediately, but hope I got some good footage because that was a really good example of how these things bite. Sometimes they will chew on that bait for several seconds, so it was an undeniable bite. And awesome opportunity, I blew it, but this is a perfect hole. All that wood and overhead cover, that's where the biters like to be. It makes them really comfortable, it's nice and deep, and it's a solid spot, so hopefully there's one or two more fish in here and I get another chance.
I just had the most shambolic fight with the king ever. Tripped and fell in the mud. Lost my bobber, which thankfully I was able to get. I think I about got this guy whooped. Finally. I mean, this thing destroyed me. Left the hole. He just shot down. So yeah, I don't know what kind of footage I got, but left the net way back there. Gonna try to snag him right here. This never ends. I've been chasing this fish for like 20 minutes. Just gotta beach this guy and I'll be on the board. My God. Oh, guys. Check that out. Look at this giant fish, guys. I don't have my good camera on me because it's about a half mile upstream with my net and everything else. I want to make sure I get a good revival on this guy because that was an unreal fight, as they all are with this uh, early season type of fishing. And that's not even a chrome one. I mean, look at that golden coloration. Big old adipose. Off he goes. First fish. Destroyed me, but got lucky. All right, guys, worked really hard today to get one fish on camera for you. That's how it goes in the early season. Absolutely no complaints, though. We are weeks away from the real salmon action, but I will spend the rest of the video breaking down my rigs for you guys, helping you guys if you're interested in trying these techniques, showing you guys all the components I use and how I rig them up and also offering some discounts on this stuff for you. So what was effective today was float fishing. Uh, it's my favorite method. Getting the visual take is awesome. And I use a center pin reel. You can use a spinning reel if you like that or a bait caster, whatever you have. Um, I just like center pinning. I like the 13 foot rods. Uh, this one's a blood run skein cane HD, which as you can see, uh, it's been through a few salmon seasons. This is the third or fourth season on this rod and you can see um, it survived it well, and it's just an awesome workhorse rod to handle these kings. Heavy action, which is really what you need to deal with these kings. So we've got the old Colville reel too, um, putting in work, and uh, run a 15 or an 18 gram float. And by the way, this is 28 pound monofilament from Blood Run, which I use as my main line. You can also use braid. You know, match your shot to your float. Um, but I like to bulk all my shot right at the swivel, which is just a small micro swivel. And then for leader, I'm running almost exclusively 20 pound tests. I think the season, especially in the early season, um, the 20 pound test is what you want if you can really put the brakes on these fish and sometimes you need to. And then I like to have two leader shot on my leader. Um, I think it really helps punch that skein down. Skein flutters through the water and has a bunch of drag so it really helps to be able to punch that down with some extra weight. And I use two hooks. Um, I've got a blood run skein hook mm -hmm. snailed on here. Um, I use a two aught or three aught size. Um, and then on the tag end of that snell, I tie on a smaller hook as a stinger hook. Something that's important to note that I hadn't thought about in the past is you have to make sure you put that stinger hook back in the bait, or technically you could get a ticket for not having any bait on your hook. But um, the whole idea here is that you use the loop created by the snell knot. You push the snell knot back and you open up a loop, um, and that's where you put your bait. And some people use an egg loop knot. I just like the plain snell, it's always worked for me. So I like to keep the setup simple. And this is kind of the setup that I've learned to use over the past few years, learning to float fish. And it's just uh, what I've settled on. It's very simple and it works for me. So nice thing about float fishing is you can do it on any rod, like I said. Um, this Blood Run Iron Head rod is a really nice option for salmon fishing because uh, it's 10 foot six. You can use this for throwing spinners, which is what I use it for. You could also float fish with this rod. And I also use this rod for casting spoons off the pier, which is another great way to get these fish. Um, so this iron head rod is an awesome option for all of those. And I was testing this out last year and now this rod is available. So um, I'll leave a link to it. And also we have that discount code for Blood Run Tackle that you guys can use for 10% off. So strongly recommend this rod. I'm using it for spinners, but you might see some of my buddies fishing bobbers with these rods as well. If they're with me on the videos because it's just a great all arounder. Um, yeah, you can throw a lure on any rod um, and you don't have to use a spinning reel either, but I like a spinning reel with braid and then 30 or 40 pound braid and then a 20 pound leader. Um, so you can really 
uh, put the wood to these fish and it makes for some really fun fights. Um, but as far as the lure goes, Arctic Spinner, um, I have some other lures in this box here, some thunder sticks and that, but realistically I'm almost exclusively throwing this Arctic Spinner, which I also have a discount code for. And I just use an all chartreuse 5 16 ounce Arctic Spinner. That's all I need um, to be confident on the river. And if I don't have it, if I run out of those spinners, I am not confident I am lost on the river. That's how much trust I have in these. The amount of times I've seen kings crush these over the years, and the amount of times they've outfished bait even is awesome. So I strongly recommend this setup to beginners. Uh, throw the spinner, um, especially if you don't have bait. So another thing to add, if you don't have bait, is you can always float fish with beads. Uh, last season, I experimented with some soft beads from Shadow Fly Fishing, some 14 and 16 millimeter beads, and um, just a red bead. I wasn't sure if I really bought it that it would actually work, but I proved to myself and also got on video that these do work and these do catch fish. So you don't need bait. You can use a, a single bead under a float and it can be really effective for kinks. So that surprised me a lot, but it's something I would recommend if you don't have bait. So those two setups, I can pretty much keep everything I need just in a very small package. This is everything I need to fish. And a lot of that's thanks to this float wallet, which is an awesome little handy invention here. Um, all the terminal tackle I need is right here. All the bobbers I need is right here. Lost a few bobbers today, unfortunately, but um, these are really nice. And a really cool thing about these is you can get them preloaded with um, stuff specifically for what you're fishing for. So there's a skein fishing preloaded float wallet that you can get. So that could be a really good deal for you guys. But for me, it's just awesome to be able to stuff this in my pack. It takes up no space. I'm gonna wrap this up reminding you guys why I'm not gonna be fly fishing as much because I get lots of questions about that. Um, might throw some big streamers like this is actually a pike streamer, but maybe I'll throw some chartreuse versions of this to try to get some kings to bite. But in general, really gotten away from the fly fishing because in my opinion, uh, for Michigan salmon or Great Lakes salmon in general, people are really abusing the fly fishing technique sometimes. Uh, force feeding these fish, flossing them with uh, tiny flies that they can't even see and it's just something you see everywhere. So um, that's how I learned to fly fish as well, using a chuck and duck. Uh, two fly setup, which is what you see most people on the rivers fishing, um, in Michigan at least, and I'm trying to show people that there's other ways as well because I learned how to do that and it's so effective, it's hard to get away from it. But once I was able to learn some other ways to get these fish to legitimately bite, such a satisfying feeling. So I'm not saying people have to fish the way I fish, just trying to give you guys examples for those of you guys who maybe don't believe that they bite or who haven't, uh, maybe just haven't had the motivation to try it or they're just not interested. Um, try to give people good examples of these fish legitimately biting and using fair chase methods. So that's a lot of what my channel's about. Hopefully I'll be back out in the water soon showcasing these methods when there's a few more fish around. We've got a couple weeks yet before the salmon run really gets going. Uh, but in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys have a great season. Thank you guys so much for the support over the years. See you next time.